have if you have questions or queries uh, about the vote of 16 or things they've said, feel free to, 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 to ask them about that. Um, it's now 25 past one, so we can to try and finish the session at perhaps uh, 2.30, so uh, that will give you some time to, to have the next session of the working group. So the first speaker is uh, Professor David Farrell, and he's head of School of Politics and International Relations at University College Dublin. Um, he returned to Ireland to take up this position in 2009, after two decades working in the UK. Uh, and he's a specialist in electoral systems and political parties, and his recent publications include Electoral Systems, uh, second edition published by Palgrave Macmillan in 2011, <coughs> and Political Parties and Democratic Linkage, which was published by the Oxford University Press. Um, he's also a research director with uh, the We the Citizens Project, um, and I know because I've been following him on Twitter and in the media, he's been a very active pro proponent and you know, supporter and in that whole campaign, which is really about encouraging uh, I suppose, greater involvement of citizens in, in, in the democracy in which we live in here. So he's probably going to talk a bit more about that himself anyway. So I'd like to give the floor to Professor David Farrell. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for the introduction and, and thank you very much also for the uh, invitation to be involved. Um, I'm going to try and not go over too much territory that other members of the panel would want to go over, so hopefully I'll manage that. <coughs> I think the thing I'd start with is just saying that there's really nothing unique. Um, I, I, a lot of what I'm going to say, I suspect, is going to be very familiar to all of you in this room, and uh, less so to people not in this room. That it, there's nothing unique about this debate. And at each and every stage in debates about the extension of voting rights, there's always this heated discussion about whether it's the right thing or not. Just think of the different sequences. You know, voting rights for working class men, voting rights for women, voting rights for people who are age 21. Um, and now we have the, the whole question about voting rights for people at the age of 16. Every single stage in the process, there, there's a sort of question mark about whether it's the right thing or not. And um, I, I just see this as just another necessary chapter. It's only a matter of time before our political leaders see sense and go and do the act of you know, reducing the voting age to 16. I mean, the basic message I want to say, which is supposed to be, again, no surprise, is that it's a no-brainer, that it's about time um, we, we move in this direction. And I think it's gratifying that the Fianna Gael party in the last, uh, most recent election have made a manifesto, manifesto commitment to reduce voting age, even if it's only to 70. At least it's a step in the right sort of direction. So let's hope that the constitutional convention that should be announced in the next few weeks actually um, addresses that in the way that it needs to be addressed. Now, there are three main sets of arguments um, that are made against voting 16. Actually, I just want to say one more thing before I get into those. I also see this debate about voter 16 as, as part of a general debate we need to have in this society about extending voting rights to all citizens. And I'm using the word citizen very advisedly. That includes emigrants, people forced out of this country some, in many ways. Sometimes they go out of choice, as our Minister for Finance very nicely reminded us. Sometimes they have no choice. 20 years ago, I had no choice. I was forced to leave this country to find work. So why should emigrants, having been forced out of this country, be denied the right to vote? And secondly, immigrants, they too should be seen as citizens. They have residency rights, they pay taxes, they carry out jobs like everybody else. Why can't we also consider that group of citizens? So I see votes at 16 as part of a general discussion, and I think it's important to keep that in mind. But let's just focus on the arguments that are often made against uh, the point about votes at 16. But the first one is the most common one. It's the one that theorists always get a lot of their um, <coughs> the meat out of. It's the, the general question of competence, maturity, responsibility. There's some variant of those three things. The competence, the maturity, or the responsibility of our younger people. Well, I mean, if, I, I, and I'm, I'm really going to do a very quick review of all these debates, because I think some of them can be dismissed very quickly. I mean, basically, if competency is the issue, well, why not have a competency test? Why not just simply ask every citizen to respond to a series of questions just to prove that they are competent to vote. And I think we all know quite quickly that the question of competence is not an age-related issue. There are all sorts of factors that go into competency or not. So to use competence and the, the, the variance of maturity and responsibility as 
to all intents and purposes, people from the age of 16 onwards, indeed people below the age of 60 in some respects, have just as many rights and therefore just as many responsibilities as citizens and they should be treated like that. So confidence, maturity, responsibility just doesn't work for me as an argument. That leads to the second argument, to sort of follow on from that, which is to say, well, we have to draw the line somewhere, don't we? We recognise that 16-year-olds can't be confident, but somewhere society needs to draw a line between when, when you have that vote in mind and when you don't. Well, I just think that's a cop-out. And if you, if you excuse the mixing of metaphors, I, I don't think the line should be set in stone. <coughs> Just because we had the line of 18-year-olds set in the 1970s or whenever voting rights were exactly being extended, doesn't mean that in, in the 2000s we should be using the same age limit as, as the reason for that. So we all know that people, society knows this, studies show this, that people mature at a much younger age than they, than they did in pre previous generations. And it's about time that the political system caught up with that reality and reflected that in when it extends the voting rights. So I don't see that second argument about where we draw the line as um, a reasonable case to be made. And then we just sort of get to the third and the ultimate argument as to why voting rights shouldn't be reduced. It's because others haven't done it, have they? So why should we? The vast bulk of the world's democracies only allow people at the age of 18 to vote. So why should we be any different? Well, of course, that's an argument that's less and less easy to hold on to as more and more democracies actually do lower the voting age to 16. <coughs> and I know admittedly some of them are quirky cases like um, you know, Brazil or the Isle of Man or Jersey and Guernsey. But Austria is in the mix. A very long established democracy in the case of Austria, one of the club of established democracies like our own. They lowered the voting age in 2008 to 16 and the walls didn't fall down. Yes, there were some unusual voting patterns, but that's another day, story for another day. The fact is that other countries have started to, to make that move. So why can't we, for once in our, in our lives, be at the vanguard as, as a country and actually be one of the first countries to adopt voting age uh, for 16-year-olds? Why should we have to follow what will, in, will inevitably happen in time? So I'm in favour of reducing votes at 16. I'm completely convinced of the argument. I think it's right. I think it makes sense. I think it's going to happen anyway. But there's one final reason why I'm, I'm in favour of it, and that is because I actually think it's a good thing for democracy. And let me finish with just two remarks on that. I think it's a good thing for democracy because, first of all, and this sort of gets to the, the, the agenda of, of we the citizens and other civil society groups that are campaigning the length and breadth of this country for serious, sustained political reform. And that is that it's, I think the, voting right, the reduction of voting age to 16 should be seen as a, a part of a general move towards a modern democracy for its time. A democracy that not only recognises the rights of citizens, which is the voting age issue, but even more importantly, recognises the responsibilities of citizens. The rights and responsibilities must go together. And for that reason, I, I would have seen as part of the package um, uh, radical education reform, particularly at secondary level bring civics in. One of the biggest shocks for me, having come back from 20 years in the United Kingdom, was the fact that at Leaving Cert there still isn't um, uh, you know, any, any reasonable discussion about democracy, the political system, theories about political systems, how our political system works, what the role of the citizen is in that. That is utterly unforgivable in, in the 21st century Ireland. It's about time something was done about that. One of the uh, most dramatic findings of our We the Citizens process as we went around the country. We the Citizens visited seven venues around Ireland and allowed groups of citizens in venues much like this, same sort of numbers, to talk about whatever they wanted to talk about regarding an Ireland of the future. One of the most dramatic, one of the most uh, consistently uh, prominent themes that came out of that was education reform, civics and education. To a person in seven locations around the country over a two month period, citizens of Ireland were saying we need to reform our education system. And that's why I see Vote 16 as part of that, the counterweight to that. Bring in the responsibilities and, and the, the education for all of our citizens about their responsibilities, at the same time as extending rights to all of our citizens. So that's one of two reasons I want to finish with <coughs> as to why I think um, reducing the voting age of 16 is a good thing for democracy. The second one is the more nerdy one, but nevertheless still quite significant, which is actually um, that it will help to improve our electoral process. One of the 
reasons why people argue against reducing the voting age to 16 is because the research shows that when we reduce the voting age to 18, turnout drops, less people turn out to vote. And research consistently shows that it's younger citizens who are less inclined to vote. But there is now a good body and a growing body of research using the Austrian case I mentioned and other examples, uh, and other good survey work again, but to back it up, that is, is able to make a credible argument to suggest that perhaps the error was to stop at 18. You know, with all due respect to 18 year olds in the room, I was 18 so I can, you know, I can apply it, it to myself as much as anyone else. When you're around the age of 18, the likelihood is you'll have just left home. The likelihood is that you, you'll just be setting up yourself in, in society, in university, in a workplace, whatever it is. It's probably the least um, useful time to be starting to think about voting. It's probably, the, it's probably the least likely thing that you're going to do. You're going to be thinking about much more important things than voting. And it's known in research that politics is very habit forming. So which party you vote for the first time is likely to affect which party you're always going to vote for election after election. Not always, but it's likely to do that. And equally, if you vote the first time you have the right to vote, there's a much greater likelihood that you will always vote. And this is why many people would argue, with research backing it up, that if you reduce the voting age to 16, you actually might do an awful lot to improve the turnout issue. Because 16 year olds are still at or about to leave school, will hopefully be receiving civics education that should be part of this process are living at home where hopefully they are dealing with an older generation that actually does value the importance of voting, and therefore might take part in their first election when they have the possibility <coughs> of that, and therefore instill in themselves and in their peer group the notion that democracy is important and voting is important. So that's what I want to end on. I want to actually stress that not only is it very